1932, Franklin D. Roosevelt was elected President of the United States. A global depression, the worst in history, had thrown millions out of work. During his campaign, Roosevelt had promised America a new deal. And upon taking office, he went straight to work fulfilling that promise by swiftly guiding 15 major pieces of legislation through Congress in his first 100 days in office. The energy and excitement being generated in Washington gave millions of Americans new hope and renewed confidence in the future. One individual caught up in the excitement was an up-and-coming newspaper and magazine columnist from West Virginia named Per Lorenz. Born in 1905 in West Virginia, Lorenz left college before graduating and moved to New York City to pursue a career in journalism. He soon became a movie critic for the magazine Judge and developed a reputation for his unfiltered opinions, whether popular or not. Lorenz believed that film had the power to educate and inspire audiences about important social issues. But he had grown disillusioned as each year Hollywood squandered this opportunity and instead churned out dozens of films for the sole purpose of mass entertainment. Inspired by the new mood in Washington, Per Lorenz set out to make his own film. He wanted to create what he described as a newsreel of the tragic events that were going on in our country, including the foreclosure on homes and dispossession of farms, the failure of banks, and the migrants from both industry and farms riding the freight trains west. His goal was to contrast how desperate things had become with the hope that the Roosevelt administration brought to the country. Lorenz failed to secure funding for the film and instead created a book of photos and captions. He called it The Roosevelt Year. The book and its author came to the attention of Secretary of Agriculture Henry A. Wallace, and soon Per Lorenz found himself meeting with Rex Tugwell, head of the newly created Resettlement Administration. Their task was to relocate struggling rural and urban families, but they needed someone to explain to the rest of America why these families needed help. Together, they hatched a plan to create films of such quality that they could be shown directly to the American public in cinemas around the country. More importantly, they would highlight the kind of social issues that Lorenz felt the big Hollywood studios suppressed. In a time before television, movies were a popular form of entertainment and a trusted news source. While movie patrons expected to see newsreels before the main feature, a documentary film, as Lorenz had defined it, a factual film which is dramatic, had never been tried with commercial audiences. Per Lorenz brought a unique perspective to this work. Although he had never written or directed a film, as a film critic, he had spent years thinking and writing about the limitations film censorship placed on the quality and topics of American film. Between 1935 and 1940, he produced three important features with the U.S. government. The Plow That Broke the Plains, a dramatic short history of how the Dust Bowl came to be and what government was doing to respond. The River, a gripping overview of the historic role of the Mississippi River and the dramatic effect deforestation had on its banks. The Fight for Life, a chilling, realistic look at the terrible consequences of poor prenatal care in Chicago's poorest slums. President Roosevelt was so impressed by these films that he referred to Per Lorenz as my shooter. After the first two films were made, Roosevelt created the U.S. Film Service and put Lorenz in charge of it. Later, after funding for the service was cut off by Congress, Lorenz made over 200 training films for the military during World War II. Per Lorenz's films were a hit with the public and he received praise from noteworthy leaders in the motion picture industry. Walt Disney wrote to tell him, I saw your film, The River, last night, and I want to extend my congratulations. I found it very thrilling and dramatic and I thought the narration and the music were perfect. Lorenz was widely praised for his use of music and narration to build the drama of the stories he was telling on film. While The Plow That Broke the Plains made a huge sensation as the first of its kind, The River won Best Documentary at the Venice International Film Festival in 1938, and Lorenz was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize for the poetic narration he had written for the film. Carrying every brook and rill, rivulet and creek, carrying all the rivers that run down two-thirds the continent. The Mississippi runs to the Gulf of Mexico. 
Herr Lorenz's example of using films to raise awareness of important social issues continues to inspire generations of documentary filmmakers. His legacy speaks to many issues we still face today. Environmental conservation, public health concerns, the challenge of explaining government programs and their intentions to the public, and more. With his three now classic films, Lorenz overcame the limitations that he and others criticized in Hollywood. As he wrote in 1930 in his book, Censored, The Private Life of Movies, the movie was created, tried, and developed in America. Supported by the dumb and the quick, rich and poor, it is the most powerful medium for news, opinion, and art in the world. I, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the only thing we have to do is fear and smell.